Good morning. Let Maya do the countdown. Let Maya do. All right. Good morning, Facebook. Good morning, everybody. Let's do this. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, Facebook. Good morning, Daily Huddle. Good morning, America. This is your Daily Huddle, and my name is Giovanni Gonzalez. And this is Maya telling me not to say good morning. This is a morning thing. I am truly excited to be with you guys, and particularly on today's conversation and the guest today. It's uh, really close to my heart and a real mentor of mine for many years. So I'm very, very excited. Sorel, good morning. Good morning, Giovanni. What time is it, my friend? It's right now, Sorel. I get it to is introduce indeed. I right get to now. introduce America's executive coach, co-host of the Delhi and a friend of mine, Sorel Catan. Good morning, Sorel. Good morning, Giovanni. And it is my pleasure to introduce to the world the number one transformational leadership coach that is my brother. Giovanni Gonzalez. We are here co-hosting the Daily Huddle, and uh, I imagine last night that you and I, Giovanni, we were going to have this virtual fight over Sheila. Like, who gets <laughs> to introduce <laughs> Sheila? <laughs> and, uh, you know, to be fair, uh, I say age before beauty. So, Giovanni, you introduce Sheila. <laughs> Very good, very good. Well, I, I love always to have a chance to introduce Sheila, and um, I, I, I can only introduce her, to be fair, from my own perspective, from my own experience of knowing Sheila for, for the many years that I have. And I, the way I like to say something about Sheila is that in my growing experience, as growing as a man, there are people that come to my life that I don't, I'm not intentionally about meeting, but they are there because they're up to a conversation to grow other human beings. So inside of that, I met Sheila and I couldn't help but to experience what is a force to be reckoned with in the context of growth and development, in the context of leadership development. And you know, in this in this conversation that right now we have in society around race and then around different backgrounds, I really got to see someone from a completely different background standing for the standing for my greatness without any apology about it, without walking on eggshells, and uh, and my life gets to be the way my life is because of Sheila James. So, Sheila. Good morning. I am excited about today's conversation and about the context of today's conversation, which is what's incomplete about our... Sorrel, tell me the question. Hey, Gio, in addition to the question, I, I want to be a bit formal and create Sheila James on top of your introduction. Very good. Sheila is the CEO of St. James Media. She's an empowerment coach, and she's a podcaster. I mean, if you guys are trolling down Spotify or anything like that, Google, look for Sheila Speaks. You will be mesmerized. She's also the author and facilitator of 2020, the next five years. That's a six-session empowerment coaching series designed for you to create a blueprint to leave an imprint and legacy in your lifetime. She's mm -hmm. been a leader in transformational education for over 30 years and has birthed many crazy people like myself, <laughs> Giovanni, <laughs> Ken Robinson, Rose Hampton. I mean, 
when, when, <laughs> when, when I hear the name Sheila James, I go back to the day when I was uh, nobody. And mm -hmm. Sheila James had me see that I could be someone who could make a difference in the world. So uh, in, in her lifetime, as short as it's been, she's managed over five southern states very profitably and expanded a center here in Atlanta. And after all that, she's mother to the apple of her eyes. <laughs> her son, Julian Michael. And her work has impacted hundreds of thousands of people here and throughout the world. And with today's huddle, mark my words, she will be impacting millions. Mm -hmm. And uh, today's question that Sheila's digging into is with regards to ending inequality, what's incomplete? So Sheila, what's incomplete? Wow, thank you. Thank you so much. And it's so good to see everybody. So here we are, what's incomplete? So there I was, 11 years old, watching TV with my brother Wendell and my sister Deborah. Flashing across the TV, a man had been shot and killed. My mother was crying and sobbing in a way like I had never seen her like that. She screamed, they killed ML, they killed ML. That man was Martin Luther King Jr. A friend of my parents, the late great Reverend Julius and Gloria James. They were friends, classmates and colleagues at Morehouse College. And he and Mrs. King would visit our home when I was a kid. As I watched TV, it was intense. Before that, I was born into the movement. And after that, I was of the movement. In that moment, I began to listen, learn. And that's when Sheila James became about change and making a difference. This was a defining moment in my life. So when I look at George Floyd and the many, many who came before him, George Floyd's death, like a possibility, has given our lives, our country, this world, a new hope, a new possibility, a new future, a new moment in time. This is a new moment in time for all of us. So when we look at inequality and injustice and everyone is like where do we go from here what do we do next the first place i assert we need to look is what is left unsaid what is left unacknowledged what is left unknown and then from there what is there to be invented what innovation can we bring to this country and to this world now and what's imagined, created, what's there to be discovered? You see, before the knee was on the neck, before, and I want you to hear me carefully, before the knee was on George Floyd's neck, there were shackles on our feet. You remember the song? Shackles on my feet. There were shackles on our feet. So we've got to get, as one of the great leaders in the great organization would say to us, we've got to drill all the way down and get to the bottom. We got to get this thing complete. So what keeps giving this? What gives this? See, there's the police brutality, but police brutality falls under the umbrella of the criminal justice system, or said another way, injustice. So I'm not saying that I know it all, but what I recommend is that there's an experiential transformational platform, courses or program with all races in this country to acknowledge, to mourn, 
to be, really be with the impact. I mean, I've seen impact from this conversation that I never saw before. I saw my 22 year old son, which makes me want to cry, get free. And what happened? He came to me, he said, for the first time as a man in this country, I feel like I'm listened to. I feel like people know me now. And I was like, wow, all these years when he would say things that I disagreed with, I wasn't listening. All he's ever seen in 22 years is police brutality. The impact so that we can deal with the cost of the past and put the past in the past and begin in this country to create a future that is inclusive, compassionate. We say this a lot. A world that works for everyone with nothing and no one left out. And that can't just be a cliche. We want to do the work so that that's a reality, that that is the way it is. And it can be. What has happened in this country and this world has been perhaps the biggest opening I know that I've ever seen in my lifetime. So the past must get acknowledged. It must get reconciled. No icing on a mud pie, as my manager used to tell us. No icing on a mud pie, but the real deal. So what is incomplete? What does Sheila mean? Well, when something's incomplete, such as the as slavery, the uh, black people in this country, white people in this country, see, it's in everybody's way. It's not just so incomplete not having all the necessary or appropriate parts. The records are patchy, they're incomplete. Words that are similar to that, deficient, insufficient, imperfect, defective, partial, patchy, fragmented, scrappy, not entire, not whole, not full, not finished unfinished, uncompleted, half finished. So as we engage in the conversation, and I'm inviting everybody who's listening, when someone is speaking, keep listening for or starting to distinguish or discover for yourself or ask yourself the questions that a simpler way, what's incomplete? And we'll start the process even right now, if you're in a dialogue or a conversation with someone, you can start that conversation now and in the background or out loud well what's incomplete what is there to be acknowledged what is there to be said what is there to be known so for me these are sheila's seven but if we begin in these areas we can start to really move the ball down the court of what's possible. And so the first thing I say is criminal justice, which includes police reform, prison reform. We've got to wake up. In this country, we charge young people as adults and go to bed at night. I don't know about you, but I know most of you on this call have children. We just heard Mia, Maya a few minutes ago. We charge 10, 11, 12, 13 year olds as adults and talk about it on the news. Well, they'll probably be charged as adults and then we go to bed. I don't know about you, I don't sleep after that. We wanna deal with law reform. We're sending, we have excessive, send, uh, I'm sorry, excessive sentencing. And then we've gotta develop people who come out of jail to transition powerfully out of the system into the country, into a great country, like a possibility. We've got to deal with our judges and who we elect, the law, the public defender. You know, what's happened on the border with children being separated from their moms? We've forgotten about that. What's happening with COVID? We can't forget about people. So prison reform, plea bargains, most people, most of these, particularly are men, they go to jail and women, 
They lie to avoid trial or life in prison. It's not about the truth anymore. We're giving away time in prison like it's handing out government cheese. And for those of you who don't know what government cheese is, Google it. The next area, education reform. Started, starting with, I wrote history rewritten and I changed it to history written. You can't exclude us from history. We came here from Africa and other areas to build this land and we did. And we invented products and all kinds of inventions. I'm not gonna go into all that. So really writing history and integrating who we are. It's okay to have a month, but that doesn't quite do. That doesn't do it. It's gotta be accurate. It's gotta be up to date. It's gotta be the truth about this country. And another area, we've gotta end poverty. Not talk about it, we've got, there's, it doesn't belong here. Not in America. Not the richest, most powerful country on the face of the earth. And the disempowering conversations that give it. See, it's all connected. The criminal justice, all that's connected. There's a world that's there and it has been perpetuating itself from generation to generation. I look at some inner cities, Atlanta, my hometown, Gary, Indiana, and I begin to ask myself, my goodness, what is this communication? What is it communicating? And for the first time, doing this, what we're dealing with from the impact of what happened with George Floyd, I came up with, for me, it's like a people who would think they were nobody or they didn't matter or they weren't included or some version of that. That's part of the impact I talked about earlier. And then next, we got to look at civics and citizenship as a birthright. Inclusion of all of it. And then we want to go on to economic reform and having a no kidding agenda for economic reform, which could either be economic, in, which could be economic inclusion. By any means necessary. Uh, Sorrell and Gio, you had a guest last week who talked about um, um, our impact on the economy and the Black community. We spent over $3 trillion. And I don't know how many buildings downtown belong to us other than anything Herman Russell has done. But seriously? $3 trillion, yeah, economic reform with a serious, no kidding agenda for it. And then reparations. So these are the things that are incomplete for me. And for the first time, I never really got reparations, but since all this has happened, I mean, I'm up every night Googling, reading, reading the books I have. You know, we've built, participated, contributed to, pretty much 100% of every product, building, recipe, clothing, tilling the land without pay. Land has been stolen. And the reparation is the making amends for a wrong one has done or paying money or paying money to or otherwise helping those who have been wrong. Atonement. And then there's what we all wanna be responsible for. And that is that each and every human being on the planet being sensitive and compassionate for one another, being fully expressed as God's children, honoring thy neighbor, economic sharing, contribution and distribution, love among all. Love, love can heal a mountain. Love can move a mountain. And speaking of healing, inside all that context that we heal, that we heal ourselves, our mind, bodies, our souls, our spirit, and that we live together and love one another. As I say, we have everything we need, connectivity, connecting our commitments to resources for the empowerment of all. 
And thank you. That is what I have to say today about, and remember to ask, what's incomplete? Ask yourself, ask another, start to look, start to engage in that like an inquiry. What is incomplete? And that's what I have today, Sorrel and Gio. Thank you, Sheila. You know, that's a really powerful question. And as I'm uh, listening to you, I hear the call for each and everyone listening. Mm -hmm. Not only ask the question, but to follow your lead and actually identify for oneself what's incomplete. <clears throat> yes. And, uh, you know, I just got for myself that uh, what's incomplete is... Uh, the role that Haiti played hmm. in creating the United States and how Haiti has been uh, treated for that. So that's incomplete for me. I, I, I got to do some digging, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, I, I'm inviting everyone to join you in the digging. And that's just a phenomenal thing. Uh, Andrea, you have a question? Hi, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Sheila. It's such good an inspiration, morning. and I'm so happy to get to know you via this yeah. amazing uh, place, a safe place for us to talk. Um, what's incomplete is a very deep question. So my question is related to your view regarding incompleteness in an individual level or a societal level, how they are related to each other. Because the things that you were mentioning are super deep in our roots, and they sometimes starts from the individual. So I wanted to hear a little bit about the relationship you see from that question, from the individual piece to the collectiveness. Okay, great. That's a great question. I think from the individual piece, the different generations will have different things that are incomplete. Like what my son had, honestly, I just didn't even know was there. And by the way, he's been a new person, literally since that has surfaced itself. It was something I would have never known or thought to ask. So now I can hear that generation in places and areas where I couldn't. So there are those individual things. For me personally, my father died young at 74. And one thing I've always been angry about was that he just died too young. But my father fought the good fight and he was out there on the front lines. And while I'd rather have my father, I'd rather have Dr. King, they had to do what they needed to do on an individual level to begin to even open things up. So there's the individual level. Then there's on the other side, a good friend of mine, and I said this on one of my podcasts, she doesn't even know what's happening. She doesn't even have a clue. She says, none of this was in my history book. God, can somebody tell me what's going on? So that world has been so excluded. And it's not just a few people. We came here to build America, period. We came here on our backs. We came here, I'm gonna just say it, okay? Can I say it, Gio? Sheila, the we time came is here, now. Say we it. We came here sleeping on top of our own shit, for God's sakes. We were so booty butt naked in front of people. And people are walking around, oh, I don't know what's wrong. I, <gasps> I just bought a pretty pink airplane. Nothing wrong with that, but we got to deal with it. That's all I'm saying. So there's the, there's the not being educated, black kids and white kids and all kids, even some of the leadership. And it's not that it's all so bad. But the acknowledgement of it, the truth shall set you free, getting the truth told, that's all. And then beginning to work on what we need. Why, is, why are there over 2 million black men in jail? It's all connected to exactly, to, it's all connected. It's also become a system, it's all connected. God, I get, I get up for this. You know, so did that answer your question, Andrea? Yes, yes ma'am. Absolutely. Right. Thank you so much. You know, I can do this all day. Thank you. I love Anybody it. Anybody else you. with a question? Hi, Rita. Rita Williams. Go ahead, Rita. You're on mute. Hi. Hi, this is an acknowledgement, Sheila. 
And it's a question for everyone. So one of the things that Sheila just talked about was the criminal justice system. We want to look at a system. And I'm so glad you said it because we're looking at the police. You know, in, in many ways, uh, you could look at the police as almost a higher help for society, meaning yeah. that they do the bidding right but um the thing that you talked about Sheila that moves me so much is um I practice criminal law as well as but mainly personal injury now and I sort of gave up on the criminal justice system I would go to court in DeKalb County all over the all over Georgia and mainly when I went to the criminal calendars there were African-American men and I just you know somebody said make you want to holler and I just was like, I, I'm not doing this. I'm just not doing it. What I get now is that, that it has to be done. It has to be spoken. That we don't, we can look at the police, but the police are hired for a job. And we, yeah. we know that people are feeling badly. We can't do anything about the past, but we can create a new vision of the future for society. And that is what you're speaking on. And I kept saying, why won't somebody say more than the police? The police are doing a job we actually hire them to do that's but right. we can look at all of it and know that there must be a new conversation about yeah. humanity and about what is possible for all of us as human beings and i just thank you for that because i i hope that we all leave here what you said Sheila, looking at the big conversation and what's incomplete is is do we consider all of us to be part of the human race and humanity. Because if we did, we wouldn't have a lot of that because you don't typically hurt that that you think is like you. So we yeah. must get, so thank you. And thank you for talking about the jails. Thank you, we incarcerate more people than any group, any nation. Thank you for everything that you said. It was thank great. You're welcome. Thank you, Rita. Thank you. Anyone else? Rose Hampton and then Ken Robinson. Good morning. <clears throat> thank, th thank you so much for that, Sheila. Re I mean, really, oh my God, it's given us so, so very much to think about. And I, I you know, oh my goodness. Um, what do I want to say? Uh, uh, it's so... I, I guess I, I guess the thing I want to say is I guess it, it's is it that a, a a man or a woman a human we don't know ourselves who we are ourselves therefore we can't know who our brother or sister is you know it's it's almost like what's the blinding factor there and then you know I think about um, do you have to go back to the place where the the error in in was made you know what i mean the 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 fault got tripped do you have to go back to the, that point in time and then come forward you know what i mean and, and heal from there and come forward but then i i, I get stuck because honestly uh, you know I, i'm a bibliophile right so i go back to when god told adam and eve not to eat of the tree of good and evil what he really meant was don't judge because you can't get that right right you will not get that right you'll screw it up yeah so, you know, we can't get all the way back there so my question to you is right now you know what we have to deal with where we are right now what now what do you say okay i'm gonna say two things that was really great everyone won't go back but history must be written and the truth about it told. But I do wanna say this, two things. You do have to get to the source of it. If it's a doctor doing surgery and you keep going back for the same thing, same thing, same thing, the thing won't heal, it won't heal because you haven't gotten down to the root of it to find out what's causing it, what is it, and it's not that I know it all, but there is something there to be complete for all parties. That's number one. And number two, I think the first thing is we have to have, and when I say the meeting of the minds, a lot of those minds are right here. 
some of those minds, you're seeing them on TV, they're going viral, they're young children, they're millennials. Then they're the people who do have the re economic resources that want to participate. And we do need to do some type of, now I have some ideas and there are a couple people I know called Giovanni Sorrell who could create, begin to design an experiential, transformational, getting to the source of something. And it doesn't take everybody, but it does take it happening. It could be happening as we speak. That's number one. Number two, um, for sure, we need to come up with the first six or seven, I don't want to, well, I, I don't want to say issues because that doesn't do, do it. But the, first, the top six or seven, which we know right there is cri criminal justice. We must do something. The world can't, we can't go on like this. Mothers with broken hearts, giving out 20 to 30 years for driving the car and you're 16 years old. That's ridiculous. That excessiveness, the economics, education. There are enough scholars, historians, black, white, all races, creeds that can write history and it doesn't need to take long because we do know, someone knows the truth. So I think some of the issues I spoke to Rose, for me, and this is just Sheila Jane's view, you know, are some of the things we need to go to work on immediately and start to re-examine. And sometimes when you work on five or six things, a lot of the other things start to happen inside of that because it's big enough. That's, you know, that, that's what I see. Yeah. Thanks, Sheila. You're welcome. Thank you. Ken? Good morning, Sheila, Sorrel, Giovanni. Thank you all so much for the opportunity to be to get together yeah. and to hear the absolutely phenomenal and amazing Sheila James. So just thank <laughs> you, and it's so great to hear and see you. You're thank welcome. you for the contribution. Um, so there are a lot of emotions, right? Or mm -hmm. there are a lot of things that go through my head once we begin to have this conversation. And even in this 30 minutes, I feel like I've been on a roller coaster, mm -hmm. right? I start here and then I go up and then I go down and I go yep. left and I go right. And that is the, the nature of where we're at right now. And, you know, one of the things that I'm left with inside the conversation is, uh, and I think Rita spoke to this, there is a certain place where there are those of us that have had this conversation and we've had this conversation for a while. There is a point where fatigue sets in. There is a point where um, uh, I guess disempowerment really sets in that uh, even in this moment that it's different, there's still this group of folks yeah. who are still having the same conversation that they continually have and one thing I'm absolutely clear about is that this is not a black community problem. And it's, it's usually been framed in the, the way that a problem with the black community and they're, they're incarcerated and they're in jail. And in pro all these different ailments were not created by the black community. I promise you, if they were and they had the power to stop it, they would have stopped it, right? And it's a systemic system that's in place. So, so I guess I'm really just asking for really myself more than anything. Yes. Where do I look to begin to be more fruitful in my conversations as opposed to being in a place of, uh, I get getting what's incomplete. And what I felt inside of that is I got even angrier. So I'll leave it there. Well, Ken, but here's what's great. Be with the incompletion of being angry. Mm. and start looking to see what am I angry about? What's incomplete? Mm -hmm. Keep That's one thing we can just do ourselves. What's incomplete? And then, you know, given the magnitude and magnanimity of what's happened, you know, you'll find your lane and you'll find where there is for you to engage and participate. I think everybody in this conversation will. Okay. All right, you guys. Well, gang, this is just a teaser. <laughs>
scheduled for the 27th of June. We call it the Daily Huddle Virtual Town Hall. Oh. And your very own Sheila James will be on there. <laughs> Among others, uh, Giovanni and I will have the honor and privilege of moderating that conversation. And the conversation's entitled Black, Brown, and White, Speaking on the Power of Diversity, Ending Inequality and Injustice. So in the context of uh, continuing the inquiry, what's incomplete, uh, it'll be the fitting place to be and continue that inquiry. So myself, Giovanni, Sheila James, love you. Uh, we are inviting you to join us. Giovanni, I'd love for you to send us home and give Sheila her last words. Do you want me to stop? You're on mute, video? Jill. Yes, thank you, Sorel. Uh, Sheila, thank you so much for the opportunity. And I, you know, I, I found myself in the voice of everybody, right? Uh, Ken, good to see you, my friend. And I found myself in your voice and, and everyone who spoke. Uh, I am learning as a, as a Hispanic man, I'm learning so much right now, like, like your son, right? Your son had this, this impact after what happened with George Floyd. And in, in my own personal experience, I've learned so much about the history, about the impact, and also, I, I wanna say it this way, I may come out not the way I wanna say it, but I have learned a lot about the resilience of the African-American people. Oh. And I have been moved and I have been inspired in my conversations at home, and also um, in, my, you know, in my conversations here at the Daily Huddle. So, um, so I have this huge acknowledgement for the African-American people, just, it is true what you said. Um, America is one of the most beautiful countries in the world. I've traveled to, to a few. And this country has been built on the shoulders and the backs of the African-American people. And uh, acknowledgement is not really there as, the, as you're building it, right? So uh, as, as we are creating it. So, uh, so thank you for your resilience. Thank you for your leadership. I am a better man for it. And... Um, and I am, Sorel, I am, you have no idea how much I'm looking forward for this daily, for this town hall. I mean, I'm like nervous about it. So uh, <laughs> thank you, Sheila. Thank you everybody for being here at the studio here at the virtual studio of the Daily Huddle. For those of you on Facebook, thank you for plugging in. Sheila, what is, what are your last words? Here are my last words. And I quote, we mean business now. And we are determined to gain our rightful place in God's world. And that's all this whole thing is about. We aren't engaged in any negative protests and in any negative arguments with anybody. We are saying that we are determined to be men. We are determined to be people. We are saying that we are God's children. And that we are God's children, we don't have to live like we are forced to live. Now, what does all this mean in this great period of history? It means that we've got to stay together. We've got to stay together and maintain unity. You know, whenever Pharaoh wanted to prolong the period of slavery in Egypt, he had a favorite formula for doing it. And what was it? He kept the slaves fighting among themselves. But whenever the slaves get together, something happens in Pharaoh's court and he cannot hold the slaves in slavery. When the slaves get together, that's the beginning of getting out of slavery. Now let us maintain unity. Let us keep the issues where they are. The issue is injustice. And that was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., April 3rd, 1968. I've been to the mountaintop and he died the next day. God bless you. God bless you, Sheila. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. You're welcome. Have an awesome day, everyone.
All right. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you, Sheila. Great Still job, welcome. Sheila. Great to see Thanks. you. Guys. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a great day.